Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a mineralogy lesson to share with you today. We're working through our mineralogy main lesson block using this curriculum by Live Education. It is a Waldorf curriculum and today we're going to be working on lesson number eight, how mountains are formed. To begin this lesson, I wrote down on little pieces of paper the different types of mountains. I just did like a really simple sketch and there are four that we're going to be covering and I then folded them up and my daughter and I each chose two. We then had to identify the mountain based on the sketch. We wrote down the name of the mountain and then we did our own independent research. I used some of the books that we have on hand and she did some online research. We then shared our results and then we started to do these lessons. So this lesson is going to go over about a week and we're going to be doing four different entries into our main lesson book. Now, I could have done this lesson a lot more compact, just done a two-page spread, written down the four different types of mountains with simpler illustrations and less information, but I chose to make these longer lessons for a couple of reasons. One is that our main lesson book has about 15 to 20 pages, and I figured we have the space, so instead of trying to compact this down into fewer pages, which I did do at the beginning, of this main lesson block and I realized that it was easier just to take up an entire page for both the illustration as well as the written portion which ends up almost never being enough space and also the other reason was that I want to spend a little more time going over these different topic areas so rather than just make this lesson a one-day lesson we ended up taking almost an entire week to go over these four different kinds of mountain formations now I happen to really like this subject area and I wanted to do a little more research specifically for the state that we live in so that I could understand these mountain formations a little bit better. That took us down a rabbit trail and I have really enjoyed learning about the geological history of the state of California. And so if you are into this subject area, I highly encourage you check it out because in California you can find very easily three out of the four different types of mountain formations and fold mountains i feel like we can find them in some areas but fold mountains are the largest mountains that are on the face of this planet so those are the alps and the himalayas and mountains of those kinds but in california you can find the other three types of mountains the fault block mountains are the sierra nevada mountain mountains but actually the formation of the Sierra Nevadas actually happened about 100 million years ago with a volcanic range. Then later, as California began to emerge and uh, different tectonic activity occurred, there was a stretching of the continent and that's when the fault block mountains emerged about 40 million years ago. We also have volcanic mountains in California and we used to have a lot more volcanic mountains in the geological past of California. We had volcanic mountains when we had subduction of the oceanic plate coming under the continental plate. And then we have dome mountains and for this illustration we are going to be illustrating Half Dome Mountain in Yosemite. And this was an illustration that is inspired by some artwork that I found online. It ended up being a lot more labor intensive than I hoped that it would be. This illustration alone took an hour and that was far longer than I wanted it to take. And also in the end, while it does look nice, it wasn't what I had completely envisioned. And part of it is all of the illustration in the foreground with the trees and the trail and the rocks, which are very nice in the original illustration. I just don't think that I did it justice. But we're working on uh, this illustration to show how dome mountains are formed. So the lesson for this particular day was going over dome mountains and the fact that they emerge sort of as a result of erosion and weathering and plant activity and animal, animal activity because they begin deep underground where volcanoes don't quite emerge and the magma doesn't quite reach the surface. And instead you have this dome underground that cools slowly over time and creates this 
huge granite structure that through tectonic activity, geological activity, ends up coming up to the surface as well as weathering that removes all of the extra dirt and sediment around these mountain ranges, um, around dome mountains, so that you have revealed this beautiful dome mountain. Now this mountain is so old that a lot of weathering has taken place so that you you see the exposed granite and also we notice that it is half dome so enough weathering occurred that actually split this dome so that you have this sheer face on one side. So the illustrations sometimes feel like they take too long in respect to the entire lesson, but I noticed that this is a really great time for reflection and a time for discussion as we are working through the illustration and a time for us to let this information about this lesson sort of settle in. So at times I feel like I would prefer to do a shorter lesson and at other times I'm really happy that this portion of the lesson allows for a little bit more reflection. I did use my Lyra color pencils and I did outline originally with some pencil just so I would know where everything goes. And also here's a little glimpse at the following lesson which is on fold mountains. And so together all four of these lessons make up the lesson on how mountains are formed. And then a little sneak preview into the next lesson on limestone and chalk and sedimentary rocks. I hope that you enjoyed this look at our lesson for our mineralogy main lesson block. You can find more information about these lessons on the blog post that accompanies this video. You can find that link down in the description box below. You can also click on the link below to check out all of the projects that we have done with our earth science mineralogy and geology unit. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at pepperandpine.